the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who pourest out upon all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication, deliver us when we draw near to thee from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind, that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship thee in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Amen. Excelsis Deo, et in terra pax 
Sominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratia sagimus tibi, propter maniam gloriam tuam. Domine Deus Rex Celestis, Deus Pater Omnipotens, Domine Fili Unigenite, Precationem nostram. Qui sedes ad dexteram patris, miserere nobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Jesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria Dei Patris. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown great and steadfast love to thy servant David, my father, because he walked before thee in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards thee. And thou hast kept for him this great and steadfast love and hast given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people whom thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered or counted for multitude. Give thy servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern thy people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this thy great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, 
and none like you shall rise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In Deo speravit or meum, et adiutus sum, et refloruit caro mea. Ex voluntate mea, confitebor in lie. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that in everything God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, Will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies, who is to condemn? Is it Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Another parable Jesus put before the crowd, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into vessels, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it really is so good to be joining you from London today. Every year when Father Bloom comes to preach for us, uh, I have exactly the same conversation with him. Uh, next year, I say, next year, I'll join you in New York. And who would have thought that it would eventually happen like this? Who could have predicted where we are now. And yet here we are, uh, an ocean apart, but linked, linked through technology and linked through today's gospel, which was also read out at Mass at St. Saviour's this morning. And in this long season of Trinity, we're working through St. Matthew, my namesake, a name which I always love to point out means God's gift. And if that doesn't go to your head, well, nothing will really. So Matthew's the gospel writer who mixes romance and thrift. He's passionate. He's almost theatrical. He's the only one who gets to mention the dramatic flight into Egypt or Pilate symbolically washing his hands. So he's dramatic, but he's thrifty too. He's the former tax collector who clearly likes order, who structures his gospel into units, five units to echo the five books of the law. 
And of the gospel writers, he's the one who makes particular use of parables. In fact, most of today's gospel, you can only find referenced by him. Exclusive to him, in particular, are today's parables of the treasure and the pearl of great price, and also the parable of the dragnet that gathers every type of fish. And all the many parables that we have in today's gospel point to the same thing. They point to the kingdom. Jesus is there saying that the kingdom is unfolding and that what he's bringing about is an experience of life that's so much greater and so much more glorious than we can ever, ever begin to conceive. So here's a little exercise. Try to envisage the most glorious situation you possibly can. Complete indulgence without any harm or any guilt. Well, says Jesus, that joy and that rapture doesn't begin to compare with the splendour that he's setting forth. And isn't that wonderful to imagine, given the parlous state that we're all in? For most people, just having a bit of normality in their lives would be fine enough to be able to visit shops or restaurants or theatres without fear, to meet up with our friends. Indeed, even to be able to attend with confidence a beautiful choral mass. You know, one of the saddest things I've read in recent months was written by someone living on their own who was simply asking the question, will I ever get to be hugged again? And still sadder are those accounts that we've all heard of people who've had to say farewell to their loved ones but at a distance, when every fibre of their being makes them want to be close up. That perfect kingdom at present seems a long way off. Yet the word used in these parables, indeed every parable, is like, the kingdom of heaven is like a seed or treasure or a net. And as Anglo-Catholics, that word like is really important because metaphors matter. These aren't just images or pictures. Jesus uses parables to convey godliness in human terms. And he uses metaphors because of their depth of meaning. They penetrate in ways that literal descriptions would fall short. Besides which, how can you describe the kingdom of heaven without liking it to something else? It's like a seed or treasure or a net. For us, symbols act as more than just signs. They embody what they convey in the same way that an affection is conveyed with a kiss. And that's why being distanced from mass is so very difficult. For in sharing, we enact who we are. It's in the mass that we have communion with each other and communion with God. So today's gospel highlights that our full communion with God is still so far off. But we are on the way as St. Paul reminds us, with the Spirit willing us on. The kingdom of heaven is within our grasp, Jesus says, unfolding mysteriously through the sacraments as divine revelation, played out in the acts of kindness. Only a complete crisis like this could reveal. Even known when those who are lonely are at last able to give and to receive a hug. Brothers and sisters, we are part of that evolving drama, writing our history and sharing our future. As heralds 
of the kingdom, therefore, may we hold our treasures with great pride and, just like St Matthew, share them wisely and with great passion, driven by romance and by thrift. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray for the church, for its unity and peace. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andy, Alan, and Mary, our bishops. In the Anglican Communion this week, we pray for the team responsible for preparing the Lambeth Conference, which had been postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and as they discern a way forward. In the Diocese of New York, we pray for St. Anne's Church in Washingtonville. We pray this week as we do every week, but especially today for our companion parish, St. Savior, Pimlico, London, and their vicar, the Reverend Matthew Catterick. We pray for those in formation for holy orders, especially Leanne, Stephen, and Mary. We pray for the world. We pray for peace and reconciliation amongst nations. In our nation, we pray for justice and peace for all peoples. We pray for the leaders of the nations, especially of our nation, for Andrew, governor of the state of New York, Bill, mayor of the city of New York, 
for all those in the legislatures and in the judiciary and all those seeking public office in these days. We give thanks for the birth to Beatrice Schra and Gil Schulman of Dorothea May. And we pray for the sick and the suffering, the hungry, the homeless, and for those in prison and all who minister to them. We pray for all those throughout the world affected by the coronavirus pandemic, for those who have fallen ill and their families and friends, for those who have died, for the bereaved, and for all those who minister to them and to their needs. We pray for those of our parish family who desire our prayers, especially Kathleen, Rachel, Gaylord, Phyllis, Anna Christina, Nancy, Forrest, Kent, James, Anne, Bridget, Carmen, Betty Ann, Colton, Mary, Carol, Anne and Claire, Rob, Ken, Carol, Daniel, Beatrice, Julia, and Sarah. And we pray for all those who have died, especially holding in years mind Joseph Donovan, John Hingham, Lane Davenport, and Edward Johnson. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, who hast created us in thine own image, grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom, help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through jesus christ our lord almighty god our heavenly father who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you unto everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Exaltado te domine, Benedictus, 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 Benedict
Amico Indignus Peccator Ferro, in honore tuo beati Mariae et omnium sanctorum tuorum, pro peccati sed pensionibus mei sed pro salute vivorum et requie omnium fidelium defunctorum. Nomeni patris et filii et spiritus sancti, acceptam sed omnipotenti de hoc sacrificium novum. Bipso benedicatur hoc incensum in cuia sonore cremabitur, and omeni patris et fili et spiritus sancti, amen. Derogatur a te oratio mea, secret incensum in conspictu tuo. Gloria patri et filia et spiritui sancta, secret erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Mundum e Domini ab omne iniquitamento mentis et corporis ut posim mundus impleri of the sanctum Domini, per Dominum nostrum iesum Christum filium tuum. Amen. In spiritu humiditatis et in animo contrito suspiciam a Domini atte, et sic fiat sacrificium nostrum in conspictu tuo, ut a te suspiciam a hodie et placiab et tibi. Dominus Deus mea, so many patri et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable unto the Lord our God. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times <clears throat> and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying
Glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, that we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, 
O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Dr. Propitius Pachim and Diebus Nostris. Ut ope misera cordiae tua duti, et apocato simis semper liberi, et ab omni perturbatione sucuri periundum Christum dominum nostrum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regnat in unitate spiritus sancti deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for thee, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for thee.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. A very warm welcome to each and every one of you to St. Ignatius of Antioch today. I'm so glad you're here with us, and I'm especially glad that Father Matthew Catterick is here with us from London. I hope he's still on the Zoom, and I hope that, uh, that I'll get a chance to thank him when the service is over. I mean, I'll, I can talk to him tomorrow. But, um, but I've been to St. Ig- St. Saviour's For about a decade I've been going, and uh, this is the first summer I haven't been in a long time. But uh, Father Catterick hasn't been here ever. He hasn't been able to join us in New York. His schedule just hasn't permitted it. And uh, we, we, we give thanks for the small graces we find in the midst of this pandemic, that uh, because of our live stream, because of all the technology that is available to us, uh, we can have Father Matthew with us at Mass today and, uh, and, and really uh, enhance our, our connection, our relationship with St. Saviors. So I hope this is, um, if, 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 if it's only his first digital visit, I hope it's uh, the first of, of many other visits, visits, either digital or otherwise. So this week we have our usual schedule of services on Zoom, evening prayer each night at 6 p.m., We have uh, uh, Stephen Morris's Bible study on Wednesday. We have the Daily Office Reflection Group on Thursday. We have uh, the the Great Litany on Friday at noon, the Office of the Dead on Saturday at 10, and then we celebrate Solemn Mass again at 11 on Sunday back on YouTube. Now, next Sunday, we're going to try an experiment because in case we have to be digital in the fall, um, I'm hoping we're going to be in person. But, um, but, but in case we're going to be digital in the fall, we need to find more and more ways of connecting with each other. So next Sunday, immediately following the service, we're going to have coffee hour on Zoom. And uh, you'll get the link from me. And as soon as William puts out the last of the candles, we, will, we'll, we can all gather on Zoom and we can, we can chat and we can see each other. The conversations we've had at the end of evening prayer on weeknights with anywhere between 10 and 15 have been jolly affairs. They've been lovely. Uh, we, we've joked and we've laughed together. We've learned stuff. Uh, we've shared things about what's going on in our lives, going on in our lives. And uh, for us, us all to have a Zoom coffee hour uh, on a Sunday after Mass, let's see how that goes. So more about that during the week. But it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you again, uh, Father, Father Catterick, for being with us. And uh, again, we hope to welcome you back soon. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain amongst you always. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit go in peace to love and serve the lord thanks be to god blessed worshiped and adored be jesus christ on his throne of glory in heaven in this most holy sacrament of the altar and in the hearts and minds of his loving and faithful people.